Draymond said Adam Silver talked him out of retiring. So what's your reporting behind that? What do you what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> what do you have there? I, I, don't, I don't know that anybody in the league office really believed that Draymond was going to retire mostly because he's in year one of a four-year contract that's going to pay him $100 million. Draymond is an emotional guy. There's no doubt about that. And maybe in that moment, he expressed to Adam Silver, said, you know what, this is too much. I'm just going to walk away. Maybe he believed that in that moment. And maybe Adam went along with it in that moment and said, look, no, look, you stay, you know, don't, we'll take some time off, you know, get yourself right. But realistically, Guys don't walk away from that type of money. And Draymond, regardless of what you think of him on the negative side, is still one of the ultimate competitors in the NBA. He was always going to want to come back. He was always going to want to try to right the ship, just like they did at different times over the last couple of years. Uh, I, I, I've gotten the sense that nobody really took that, uh, I don't call it a threat, but that idea all that seriously. Okay. So when do we see him again? Uh, they got a road trip coming up. I think it begins Friday um, or begins this weekend. Uh, I, I would expect to see him at some point over the next game or two. I think he's going to work. He's back with the team now, obviously, on the sidelines. Yes. Um, and they got to do something, Rich, because, you know, if the playoffs start today, they wouldn't be in it. They wouldn't even be in the play-in right now. You've got Steph Curry making comments like, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. So what's he referring to? Him? Draymond? I think, he, I think he's referring to kind of, no, not to, not to Draymond. I think he's referring to internally the way that they're playing, the way they're approaching games. You saw that game against New Orleans. He gave like 46 points in the first quarter. Like th- th- That's not a hallmark of a team that's been really good defensively you know, during its championship years. I think he's also talking about the roster. The roster it just doesn't work at a championship level. You look at the numbers that Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga have playing together. They're awful. They're unplayable together. And these are two key guys for this team's success. So uh, they're a team, I think, that is very likely to do something before this February trade deadline because I think it's pretty clear in Golden State that if they're going to try to maximize whatever's left of Steph – they're going to have to change this roster up. So what do they do? Like, what what are, what are you seeing on the horizon? Trade deadline is what, around Valentine's February Day? February 8th, I believe. Okay, it's before. early. For, it's, okay. it's, they moved it up the last couple of oh, years. Oh, that's right. They, 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 every year, it's, there's a big splash during Super Bowl week. Yeah. Last year, it was Durant in Phoenix. Yeah. Yep. They like to. Okay. They, they like to. They like, they to, like to move it ahead of the, the. It used to be after the All Star break, and okay. now they want it before then for, okay. for any number of reasons. All right. The name to watch for the Warriors and a few other teams yes. is Pascal Siakam. So when Toronto traded OG Ananobi, that was their signal that they're now officially open for business. OG was an expiring contract. He was a young guy. Pascal Siakam is an expiring contract. Going to be looking for a max dollar deal. I think that Golden State is uniquely positioned to get Siakam because they've got a young piece that Toronto would want in the Ananobi deal. Toronto didn't prioritize draft picks. They prioritized young players. They got RJ Barrett. They got Emmanuel quickly. They got a bunch of guys or a couple of guys that are age 24 and younger that fit the timeline of Scotty Barnes, who is their franchise player. So with the Warriors, you've got Kaminga who's still 21 years old and looks like he could be a pretty good player. I mean, he's had some great stretches at times during this season. If Golden State is willing to put Kaminga in a deal for Pascal Siakam, I think they're the front runner to land Siakam. Now, they may not want to do that because Kaminga is still high lottery pick, good young player, again, shown flashes. But if they're willing to do that, I think that, you know, they are a clear favorite to land that guy. Why wouldn't they be? I mean, I, I know you just gave... A- you know, reasons why you want to hold on to Kaminga. I get it. I mean, he, he already, what, told Shams, uh, I, I don't like the way I'm being handled or my rotation, right? And you just said he and Wiggins are Kaminga aren't doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that should be... Comp- That's, uh, is he honestly, at the level where you so can gripe who's, about... Who's the person on the staff who tells Steve Kerr, you never guess what 
the athletic just reported. <laughs> I don't know. You, know. you know what I mean? Like, hey, Steve, you know, you know who just like called Clay, you out? Clay griping about yeah. like being benched in the fourth quarter of some games. <laughs> I can buy that. Right. Kaminga, that's, even that's though Kaminga's right, like Kaminga should have played in that game that he was, he yeah, was yeah, referencing. Yeah, what, like 18 minutes yeah, against New Orleans? Not, right, that yeah. was the Nuggets game. Not oh, a, Nuggets, okay. Yeah, not, not a smart uh, okay. decision there, but not, not that. Look, I think when push comes to shove, they're going to have to do it because – Look, Siakam's really good. Like, he is a 20-point-per-game scorer. He's a He's decent terrific. Th- he is a defensive-minded player, too. He is like a souped-up version of Andrew Wiggins. Now, Wiggins is somebody that, I don't know what's happened to him over the last couple of years. You go back to 2022. They do not win a championship unless Andrew Wiggins is on that roster. He was an he all-star. Is an indispensable part of that team as a three-point shooter and a defender on Jason Tatum in the finals. Since then... It has been a progressive and now a precipitous decline for him. He has just fallen off a cliff to where he is at some point unplayable for certain Mm. stretches. So I think you've got to, if you're again, if you're going to try to keep preserving this window where you've got Steph, you've got Clay, and you've got still Draymond, you've got to do something. And to me, Siakam, who is a versatile guy, can play in multiple different positions, that's the guy I would go after. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 